Grab the line, Luke. Hold him. No, no, no. Date his mouth. Hi, I'm Wayne Walker, and welcome to Incredible Idaho. It's sturgeon fishing in Hell's Canyon, and we'll show you how to catch the big ones. Beneath these waters lurk huge sturgeon who have been cruising this stretch of the Snake River long before the sound of a jet boat bounced off the canyon walls. In fact, some of the biggest bruisers in here were probably adept at escaping from fish hooks years before most of us even learned how to bait one. Rainbow trout works well. Bass works well. Sucker, squaw fish. Well, sturgeon are the longest lived fish we have in the state, and records indicate that some of them may have exceeded over 100 years of age. Uh, we've seen fish, and actually of age fish, that were in the 50, 60, and 70 year old uh, class range. Fish and game biologists Tim Kokenauer and Ed Shriver took us along on a sturgeon adventure. We're out for the chase, but an added benefit for the scientists is the opportunity to capture and mark fish for a research study. I think you've got a fish here. Our first catch is a little one by sturgeon standards, measuring less than three feet. I'm going to work it right there. A scoot is removed from the sturgeon's left side, so if this fish were to be captured again by biologists, they'll know at a glance that it has already been injected with a pit tag or passive integrated transponder. It's a tiny computer chip that's inserted into the sturgeon's muscle. Each time this fish is caught in the future, biologists will be able to evaluate the sturgeon's health and determine its growth rate, and in this manner get a better idea of how the general population is doing. Biologists also receive valuable information from the free sturgeon permit that each angler is required to send into the Department of Fish and Game at the end of the year. Okay, he's ready. Swimming dinosaurs. Okay, we've whetted our appetite and practiced a bit, and we think we're ready, so bring on the big boys. Pump. Reel down. Break it. Don't give him an inch or that fish is gone. Man, he is really running now. He's got about 100 yards of line out there in that hole. And if he wants to go through that rapid, you'll never stop him. All we can do is chase. And so it begins, a battle of wills that I'm will determine it. who's tougher, man or beast. He's coming back a little bit. I'll tell you, you got to want one of these guys. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> It's like tackling a running back, isn't it, Luke? You gotta want him. <laughs> he wants to run a little bit now. It seemed enough. each time the fish was within spitting distance of the boat, he'd get a fresh burst of energy He's and bolt, racing again for the middle of the river. He went out in that deep water. I mean, we lost 90, 95 yards of line in 40 seconds. Okay, so he's back out there in a comfortable spot. We didn't know if he'd stop there or just keep moving. And uh, as long as Wayne can gain line on him, we'll stay right here. After 40 minutes, it's beginning to look like a draw, the only winner being the creeping darkness. Right around here. I'm right around here. Let him run. Finally, as dusk gives way to the gloom of night, the exhausted fish surrenders, and the long battle is over. He is brought gently alongside the boat. You dally, oh, you got that tied. All right, line's free. Reel it up, Wayne. Okay. The biologists measure the fish and inject it with a pit tag. Now, if the drawn out struggle to land this sturgeon still hasn't convinced you of its power, watch this. Right here is a Perhaps this fish lost the battle with a rod and reel, but he certainly won the scuffle with our television camera. We surrender gracefully and withdraw to fight another day. And that day dawns bright, clear, and hot. Hell's Canyon, somehow the name seems appropriate. The first known reference to this spectacular gorge as Hell's Canyon was back in 1895. 
It was described in a history book as a place where the river winds like a serpent and the rock walls tower to such a height they almost shut out the sun. These forbidding basalt cliffs provide a secure home for the sure-footed bighorn sheep that populate the area. Down below, the lambs and ewes feed quietly, while somewhere above in the rocky crags, the big rams seek shelter from the heat. We are now back on the prowl, roaring up the river in search of the perfect sturgeon hole. Here below Hell's Canyon Dam, not much has changed from the way it looked a thousand years ago. It's the way it was naturally. Uh, we have deep pools, sturgeon-like deep pools, probably in excess of 20, 30 feet. Uh, we have good flows pretty much on a year-round basis. Water temperatures are within uh, reasonable uh, limits. Um, and in fact, it's really not disturbed by man, other than just a few recreational fishermen. These fish pretty much have it to themselves. Come on, guy, do something. <laughs> Except for us, of course, and we're about to make history. Moving up, where are you further out than yep. I am? I'll tell you, I spent a lot of time fishing for sturgeon. This is the first time we ever caught two at once. The two scientists work like a well-oiled machine, switching and ducking with a finesse and instinctive tell. rhythm that we amateurs oh, couldn't come close to. Five, six feet. Well, what do you think, Ollie? I think we've done it now, Stanley. <laughs> We're gonna need two ropes, Luke. You're gonna have to, oh, a rope on each side, a rope end on each side. I don't think he wants to be in yet. Eventually, the two sturgeon, each well over five feet, are brought alongside the boat. Now, the process of evaluating and tagging sturgeon for scientific study takes a little extra time and inevitably adds in some measure to the stress on the fish. But if you're lucky enough to hook one of these big bruisers, you can follow these simple tips, and the fish you release will swim away sound and healthy and ready to return to the battle another day. This landed this sturgeon. He was exhausted when he came into the boat, rolled belly up. Sturgeon have a natural handle right in their mouth. Keeps the fish upside down and docile. You simply take the hook out of their mouth. If the hook is too deep, don't mess with it. Just snip the line off as close as you can. The hook will rust out very quickly. Be careful that you don't pinch the gill covers closed because that's how the fish respires. Hold him for just a few minutes while the fish rests and then cradle him right side up, making sure you don't pinch the gill plates closed and let them revive. And they'll let you know when they're ready to go. Shouldn't take sturgeon out of the water because their organs uh, aren't supported. The the sturgeon actually just floats in the water and is suspended by the water and if you took the sturgeon out, uh, this fish here is 100 pounds or so, uh, is very stressful on its internal organs, as well as removing the slime coat if you put it on the sand or the rocks. Just best to leave the fish right in the water. There is nothing quite like the feeling of battling a worthy opponent, pausing to acknowledge his power and dignity and then gently sending him home. They're Idaho's living dinosaur. Stay. Fit. You bird hunters will be especially interested in our next story. It'll tell you how to keep your dog healthy throughout the hunting season. Okay, good boy. Now sit, sit, stay, fetch it up. A lot of people uh, spend a lot of time in the field with their dog. Dog's important to them and certain injuries can ruin a trip or spoil a vacation and uh, um, they mean a lot to most people and knowing how to take care of them um, feels good to people. Good boy, good boy.
Dr. Randy Aker speaks not only as a veterinarian, but also as a dog owner who has enjoyed considerable time in the backcountry with his four-legged companion, a big yellow lab who answers to the name Tate. Tate, heel. The most important element in a good animal care program is to regularly attend to your dog's health. Randy says a number of injuries can be avoided if dog owners take a few simple precautions. Well, I think prevention is important. I think, is the area full of snakes? Is there thin ice? Um, is their dog in condition to handle the area they're going to? Are they transporting their dog safely? Um, I think thinking through the trip and uh, having some supplies if needed for dog first aid and then also using common sense about what you're doing with your dog. But despite these precautions, sometimes injuries do occur. One of the most common problems, especially in the fall, is injuries caused to ears, eyes, and paws by sharp angular grass seeds. Randy suggests carrying a pair of tweezers in your pack, along with a prescription medication called Floricane that deadens the eye tissues. You can see that sticker in the eye there. And uh, that sticker will wear a hole in his cornea within three to four hours if it's not removed. With Floricane, he'll let me pull that foreign body out of there and I've prevented a corneal ulcer and uh, also saved myself a drive, a drive out of my hunting area. Ears too can be a problem. If you see your dog stop abruptly and begin shaking his head, check his ears immediately. You may be able to remove the seed with tweezers and thus prevent the more serious injury that would occur if the grass was allowed to work its way into the dog's eardrum. Gunshots a fairly common injury, uh, especially shotguns from a distance. Um, probably you would take your tweezers, uh, clean the wounds out, and generally there'll be a plug of hair in each of the wounds where the pellet went in. You'd want to pull the hair out so it doesn't get infected. Um, you'd want to put your Neosporin or your first aid cream right in the hole and then you'd probably put him on a systemic antibiotic if you had one with you. But it's important to get the wound cleaned out, it's important to get the hair out of the wound, and then it's important to watch for signs of peritonitis or more serious damage inside. Peritonitis is an infection in the abdominal cavity that occurs when the shot penetrates a bowel. This is an emergency, and Randy strongly suggests driving your dog to a veterinarian immediately. If he shows signs of peritonitis, abdominal pain, vomiting, um, depression, um, it's pretty serious. Along with your tweezers, include some bandages and gauze when you're packing your first aid kit. These can be used to treat cuts on the chest or ears that may result from a tangle with a barbed wire fence but probably a more common use is bandaging an injured paw. Tate's just run through the creek and he's lacerated his pad. It's bleeding pretty profusely and we want to get that bleeding stopped. So we apply a foot bandage. Tate, sit, stay. Um, this bandage would be applied rather tightly for the first two hours uh, to get the bleeding controlled and then you might want to loose it up. Basically you clean the wound out with betadine and uh, um, get it as clean as you can and then start in with rather soft gauze in sort of a figure of eight pattern. You apply your stretchy tape that has some give to it and then this is sort of waterproof tape. And what this bandage will do is it'll stop the, ban stop the bleeding. It'll prevent a lot of dirt and gravel from getting up in the wound and basically you'll have your wound in a lot better shape and you don't have to carry the dog home. Rattlesnakes, porcupines, skunks, ticks, poisons. If you have a curious active dog, the possibilities for injury seem endless. Randy suggests taking a first aid course from your veterinarian before you hunt this fall, because after all, a dog is man's best friend. Old Tate here, he'd probably save my life if he could, and I'd probably help him if I could, so I think it's important to know something about how to take care of your dog.
The Island Park area in eastern Idaho boasts some of the best wildlife viewing in the state. We'll take you on a tour. Here in this remote, biologically rich corner of our state, fish and wildlife abound in large numbers. Just like this moose trio, which cruise through a wet meadow as onlookers watch from the road. Birds and animals in Harriman State Park don't seem to be spooked by humans, making this one of Idaho's finest spots for wildlife watching. In fact, Harriman is kind of like a mini Yellowstone National Park, only without the crowds and RVs. Against a tapestry of lush green vegetation and coniferous trees, Harriman features about 20 miles of trails that visitors can hike, mountain bike, or ride on horseback. These paths wind through a wide variety of the park's natural areas, providing glimpses of rare waterfowl, such as the American coot, white pelican, trumpeter swans, sandhill cranes, cinnamon teal, and many more. seeing the animals hopefully we'll see some today but there's a secret to seeing them does anybody know what that is be quiet. be quiet right they probably already know you're here but we're kind of a small group so we may be able to see some recently a fifth grade class from Idaho Falls took a nature tour of Harriman State Park just during an hour-long walk the class learned about wildflowers waterfowl and they even saw a moose Oh, he's giving you a nice good view of him. He's right through there. We'll probably get to see a lot of them because our trail goes right through there. But this guy, he's probably about a year old. Those are Indian paintbrush. Well, the Indians would take them off and mix them with bear grease from their fat, and they'd make paint for their faces out of it. It's also the state flower of Wyoming. In early summer, the mosquitoes at Harriman are fierce. At Silver Lake, there were so many bugs on the water, it looked as if it were raining. The old railroad ranch, donated to the state by the Averill Harriman family, used to house guests who came from around the world to fish the world-famous Henry's Fork of the Snake River. A popular fly fishing spot in front of the ranch is called Millionaire's Pool. It's frequently chock full of anglers seeking large rainbow trout, but the trophy fish aren't fooled easily. If you choose to visit Harriman State Park, be sure to leave time to see Upper and Lower Mesa Falls on the Henry's Fork. The Upper Falls plunges 114 feet and the lower falls 65 feet. For birding enthusiasts, Harriman is close to a number of wildlife refuges just an hour or two away in the Three Corners area of Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. Hardcore anglers also might want a float tube nearby Henry's Lake or fish the fire hole in Yellowstone or the Madison in Montana. But whether you come for the fishing, the birding, or just to escape to Idaho's outdoors, if you choose this corner of the state, you'll discover a bit of paradise. That's it for now. Thanks for being with us, and we'll leave you with images of Idaho in the summertime.